Karen, thank you so much for joining us. I, I appreciate how busy you are. I know that you're on like endless Zoom meetings trying to um, help steer the church through um, these unprecedented times. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. It's good to be with you and to share together. You know, the church is reflecting at the moment on the events of George Floyd's death. Um, you know, they took place in the US. We've seen this kind of event before. I mean, it's it's always been deeply shocking. It's not the first death of this kind, um, violently at the hands of uh, law enforcers. But somehow, um, this particular incident, this particular um, brutal act seems to, um, I don't know, seems to be different. There seems to be something, a momentum here or something, an outrage that seems to be in a different order of magnitude. Do you think that's the case? And why do you think that is, Karen? I, I think you're right. I, I, I think it does feel um, different. It, it, it feels very different for me in a very personal way. And if we are um, observing the response um, nationally and internationally, um, there is a difference. Um, and, you know, some of that is still being played out now. Equally, um, it's already kind of dropping down from the front page. Um, so, you know, there are, there are some sort of questions around whether that is going to be maintained and sustained in terms of our response. I think the other thing that I'd want to say is that uh, yes, it has happened before, and on one level we're sort of desensitised, you know, just another black male, sadly, that's been um, killed um, in, uh, you know, really awful circumstances um, connected to the police. This is not, um, this is not new, um, and, and yet, as you say, there is a, there is a difference. And I think some of that, um, some of that shift some of this feeling that this isn't quite the same as before um, and that's not to detract from the fact that a person has been murdered here and a family who are grieving um, but beginning of March um, and we're still in this context of a, of, of a lockdown and we've had a period of time I think where we have just kind of been connect, reconnecting maybe with our humanity mm. um, we've been kind of been a little bit um, more sensitive to each other those of us in the in the church have been finding ways of reaching out to others in a in a new place and there's a, been a sort of of, of leveling really um mm. concern for ourselves but concerns for for others um and it's been more than kind of um flesh and blood stuff it's about learning again our interdependence on each other mm. in a sort of stillness as well and i think into that comes this murder this event um and that has been shocking that's kind of taken us back to a place where we thought we were moving a little away from for me that's one of the reasons as to why this feels particularly more poignant than um events that have happened and have been exactly the same as yeah. this and of course, we've, we've all seen this horrific um, video. Um, so, you know, the digital world makes mm. it very real. Um, in the past, we may have thought, well, you know, this is the reporting, but what else is going on? Perhaps we didn't have the evidence. We've all been able to see that for ourselves. And that, I think, has broken into some of the restoring and some of the, the healing, if you like, that was coming out of this um, lockdown, out of the pandemic situation. And then for, for those of us as people of colour, um, there's a sense of enough is enough. Um, yeah. You know, yeah, 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 no, thank you for that. I mean, I, I, this is perhaps a bit of a personal question, Karen. Uh, so I hope you don't mind me asking it, but you know, y you're, a, you know, in a senior position in the church now. Um, you're also a person of colour. How? What? What has um, you, you know your experience of racism been in the UK? Um, and also, has your experience in the Church of England been um, a healing one, or has it been mixed overall? Mm. So yes, it, 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 yes to, to 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 both of those. I'm a, a wonderfully 
um, I'm a synthesis of, of, of a, a blended person, I suppose, because of my ethnicity, my nationality, um, my birth. Um, I don't know any other life other than this one in the, the UK. And certainly since my ordination um, in 94 and my activity in the church prior to that time, um, there have, of course, been um, moments of, of healing. Um, I'm recalling an incumbent who was totally supportive of me after my ordination, wanted the best for me, was fighting for me, rooting for me. I have an adopted white mother um, who's in her 80s now down south, who was just the, the best. In, in, in terms of being alongside me and supporting me and my son as a curate. Um, I recall coming back from a holiday um, to a space. It was just a space at the back of my house. But when I got back, we discovered that um, a group from our church had blitzed it and turned it back into a garden. So lots of, lots of experiences of, of, of healing, absolutely. Um, but the, the, the church is an institution um, is made up of um, individuals um, with foibles and sins, as well as all those uh, positive things about ourselves. And so therefore, um, I have experienced, I continue to experience racism, as I do in the, um, in, in the wider world. Um, and you know that thing where clergy come together quite often and share sort of funny anecdotes of, of, of ministry. Yeah. Um, there are sort of a group in common. Um, when people of colour um, come together as a group of people who have our uh, ethnicity in common, um, you know, we, we could spend the whole time together talking about um, our experiences of, of racism, both within and outside the church. Um, and of course, they're not quite as funny as the clergy anecdotes. Mm. Uh, so I, I guess I'm saying there's a long way to go. Well, you, you know, Karen, just speaking personally i'm really sorry for every time you've experienced prejudice and i'm sorry for you know all the times when you know my unconscious bias has impacted my relationship with um black and ethnic minority colleagues so i'm rooting for you and i know that we've all got a long way to go thank, thank you nick and thank you for, for just articulating that and sharing that with me that that is really appreciated and, and it is a we, it is a, it is a journey that we're doing together. That we must yeah. do. I think maybe, you know, historically it has felt like it's sort of just a, a task for those of us who are BME, but it is something we need to do together. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. We'll crack this, Karen, we really will. And um, I mean, one of the things that's interested me, uh, particularly coming at it as a, as a community of faith, is obviously this has been a very highly charged political situation. I mean, we've seen crowds, we've seen demonstrations, we've seen a kind of iconoclastic behaviour, chucking things in them, in uh, into harbours and and all that kind of thing. Where do you think the th us, we as a as a Christian community, as a theological community, have mirror what we're seeing on the streets? But where do you think we might differ from what we see on the streets? Mm. We, we have absolutely seen the best and the worst, as you would expect in a highly emotionally charged, painful, moving situation. Um, and, you know, we, we have to re repent um, of the worst of, of, of this. Um, but there is, um, there are several responses, really. I mean, I think, yes, the, the, the politics play a big part, um, but politics is about um, power and it's about governance. I think theology is also about power and, and governance. And so for me personally, I don't have quite a, a, a sort of demarcation, a separation between the two. And of course, as the church, we're wanting to have a response, um, a very practical response. You know, it's the James thing, James 2, where James speaks about, um, you know, faith and, and action. Um, both of those things need to sit alongside each other so we do need to be active we do need to have a voice in how our economy um, revives itself um, and we do need to have a voice into the difficulties around homelessness and as a society in response to the pandemic you know we, we have homeless people now in in hotels um, the church has a response through night shelters and food banks 
so so the two the, the two sit alongside each other and we do have to be um we do have to take care in our response i guess it's you know kind of what would jesus do um or our theological reflection you know where where is god in all this and those are not easy questions to answer mm. um you know we, we've, we've got um conversations now around um memorials and um statues that have represented something quite sinister we have to have a conversation about that and the church needs to play a part in that and so the church the church will inevitably have a, a political voice and that can feel quite scary but as i say um it's quite clear i think biblically um that our response must be um active as well as prayerful and, and spiritual both, both need to sit alongside each other and that's that challenging that's very challenging it is it's actually as you say it's it's quite scary um because it's a kind of root and branch re-examination isn't it yeah again you know the best and the worst and and also you know having some confidence to acknowledge what we might actually want to leave behind um you know we're, we're as a diocese and all the dioceses around the country are thinking about you know our, our, our mission statement is um you know being church for a different world um and so there are things we will want to leave behind and things that we want to take with us and new things that we want to um uh, add into the mix um and you know the, the, the political conversations i think are the same challenge, challenge yeah well. you know st james and emmanuel we, we we've committed ourselves to being a church for everyone that's fundamental to who we are um we we have a large uh, community of um, Farsi and Kurdish speaking refugees. We run um, a night shelter with Boaz. We like to think that we're a welcoming and open Christian community. So what would your advice be to the people of St. James and Emmanuel practically? So, because we don't want to just sort of give ourselves a pat on the back and move on. But neither do I think we want to sort of manufacture something. So, what is it that a community like us does in response to the death of George Floyd? First thing I want to say is is, is thank you for, for all that you're you're doing um, and for the resources that you're putting into this this area of, of ministry through people, through time, through through money, and all of those ways in which you need to invest in this. So the, so the question about what um, you need to be doing, I think it's, I think it's doing and being. Um, you know, at the, at the root of who we are as human beings, there are some basic things that, that, that we need. We need love, we need um, shelter, um, we need connection, we need community. And whether we are indigenous to this, to, to this society or whether we are um, incoming refugees or asylum seekers, those things are true for them as well. I think it's important not to sort of make assumptions. Um, so, you know, the, the, the VME community are not a, a homogenous group. Um, mm. And what I'm sharing may be shared with, with other colleagues of, of, um, uh, of VME heritage, um, but, but may not be. And so I think it's important not to sort of make assumptions. We often make assumptions about what's required. Um, so I think at this point in time, there is a real need for, for listening mm. um, and hearing, which is slightly different. Um, there is a need for remembering, um, a, a, again, a basic human need that whilst we give and support, um, that we, we also need our autonomy. And we need freedom and that's a kind of basic gift from from god um and that's a care that i know you take as um as a church community in your your work but particularly in response to this situation that, that the listening and the hearing is probably the first and foremost thing to do mm. but there's also this area of just being alongside um hearing what the responses are because they're going to be very different the, you know the thing of with where where children um young children often are given bought uh, christmas presents and they prefer the wrapping rather than the, the present 
um, it's, it's a bit like that. You know, we make assumptions about what we think our brother or sister might need um, without actually asking them, without actually hearing from them. So the response will be a very individual and, and unique one. There are obviously some, you know, some responses that we share, hurt, pain, um, all, all of us, you know, people of colour and, and, and allies as well. So a lot of listening and, uh, and as you say, hearing. Um, Karen, I really appreciate you taking time out to speak to us today. Um, it's been great to hear from you. Um, thank you for being our Archdeacon. Thank you for doing a fantastic job. Thank you, Karen, for, for, for your time. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Thank you.